to assist free men and free governments in casting off the chains of poverty. But this peaceful revolution of hope cannot become the prey of hostile powers. Let all our neighbors know that we shall join with them to oppose aggression or subversion anywhere in the Americas. And let every other power know that this hemisphere intends to remain the master of its own house. Kennedy Yates, 1961 inaugural speech could not have come at a worse time. It was during the height of the Cold War. Tensions between the Soviet Union and the U.S. were at its peak. This speech sparked one of the most dangerous turning points in history, the Cuban Missile Crisis. Instead of worldwide nuclear war, the major world powers were able to find a way to, to avoid nuclear war through negotiations and compromise leading to the Nuclear Non-Purification Act of 1963. Kennedy's speech was a major threat to the Soviet Union's power politically. The Soviet Union felt threatened because of the Jupiter missiles in Turkey which allowed America first strike capability on the Soviet Union. From these events, Khrushchev and Castro, both leaders of, of prominent communist countries, plan to haunt the U.S. arms expansion by the Soviet Union supplying nuclear weapons, Cuba, so that they would have first strike capabilities on America like the Jupiter missiles in Turkey. The crisis switch lasted 19 days started when the U.S. was taking surveillance photos with a U-2, a spy plane that flew over Cuba, and took reconnaissance photographs on October 15, 1962. The photo showed Soviet missile installations on Cuba that were nuclear and could make first strike capability on the U.S. The U.S. thought that the missiles could reach D.C. in every major city and nuclear silo in the U.S. JFK was the president at the time of the United States. He was made aware of this and put together a committee of 12 advisors called the XCOM. Across the Atlantic, in the Soviet Union, Moscow. Nikola Khrushchev, who was the dictator of the Soviet Union, he was contemplating his next move, fully aware that one wrong move and his country and the United States would be nuclear wastelands. Meanwhile, on a small island of Cuba in the Caribbean, is Fidel Castro, who was the dictator of Cuba, who was a strong communist ally of the Soviets, Castro band together with the Soviet Union to take on the United States. They planned to threaten the United States with nuclear missiles so close as to destroy parts of the U.S. The Soviet Union gave approval to Cuba to strike if the U.S. displayed any aggression. The important events during the Cuban Missile Crisis. It was October 16, 1962. The news was received that Cuba had nuclear missile installations. This was the beginning of the climax of the Cold War. Kennedy convened the meeting of the XCOM group to find a solution to the problem. They discussed possible airstrikes and land invasions of Cuba. Another option was naval quarantine of Cuba. It was October 22, 1962. Kennedy also addressed Khrushchev in a letter saying, I have not assumed you or any other sane man in this nuclear age deliberately plunge into war which is crystal clear that no country could win and which could only result in catastrophic consequences to the whole world including the aggressor. Later that night, Kennedy addressed the American people on television. I have directed that the following initial steps be taken immediately. To halt this offensive buildup, a strict quarantine on all offensive military equipment under shipment to Cuba is being initiated. All ships of any kind bound for Cuba, from whatever nation or port, will they found to contain cargoes of offensive weapons be turned back. It shall be the policy of this nation to regard any nuclear missile launched from Cuba against any nation in the Western Hemisphere as an attack by the Soviet Union on the United States, requiring a full retaliatory response upon the Soviet Union.
I call upon Chairman Khrushchev to haul and eliminate this clandestine, reckless, and provocative threat to world peace and to stable relations between our two nations. I call upon him further to abandon this course of world domination and to join in an historic effort to end the perilous arms race and to transform the history of man. Our goal is not the victory of might, but the vindication of right. Not peace at the expense of freedom, but both peace and freedom here in this hemisphere. And we hope around the world, God willing, that goal will be achieved. October 23rd, 1962. U.S. Ambassador to the U.N. Adeline Stevenson went to the United Nations Security Councils regarding the Cuban Missile Crisis. Question. Do you, Ambassador Zorin, deny that the USSR has placed and is placing medium and intermediate range missiles and sites in Cuba? Yes or no? Don't wait for the translation, yes or no? Mr. Stevenson, would you continue your statement, please? You will receive the answer in the due course. Do not worry. <laughs> I'm prepared to wait for my answer until hell freezes over, if that's your decision. And I'm also prepared to present the evidence in this room. October 25th, in the, U the United Nations, evidence was shown of the missiles and clarification that these were nuclear missiles with short range and long range capabilities. In a dramatic confrontation between Stevenson with the Soviet ambassador Zoran. The U.S. won the battle of public opinion throughout the world and gained support for political support for the blockade of Cuba. On October 27th, a second letter from Moscow demanding tougher terms, including the removal of the Jupiter missiles from Turkey, was received in Washington. Back in the White House, Kennedy and Khrushchev made a compromise. They reached a basic understanding that the Soviet Union would withdraw their missiles from Cuba under the UN supervision in exchange for American pledge not to invade Cuba. Diplomacy had triumphed over aggression, war, and possible oh, nuclear on. destruction was averted. Since the beginning of history, war has been mankind's constant companion. It has been the rule, not the exception. A war today or tomorrow, if it led to nuclear war, would not be like any war in history. A full-scale nuclear exchange, lasting less than 60 minutes, with the weapons now in existence, could wipe out more than 300 million Americans, Europeans, and Russians, as well as untold millions elsewhere. and the survivors, as Chairman Khrushchev warned the communist Chinese, the survivors would envy the dead, for they would inherit a world so devastated by explosion and poison and fire that today we cannot even conceive of its horrors. So let us try to turn the world away from war. Let us make the most of this opportunity and every opportunity to reduce tension but now, for the first time in many years, the path of peace may be open. No one can be certain what the future will bring. No one can say whether the time has come for an easing of the struggle. But history and our own conscience will judge us harshly if we do not now make every effort to test our hopes by action. And this is the place to begin.